Whoa. Whoa, guys. There it is. Hi, guys. I got kind of an interesting one today. So in front of me, I've got two Soviet televisions. I've got an Electronica and I've got a Unist. The Electronica I've actually had restored for a while and I use it sort of as a test, a test monitor when I'm working on uh, other Soviet electronics. But this Unist just came to me recently and I didn't know it was working. I actually thought that this was gonna be a, a restoration project that I have on the channel. But when I tested it, we've got really good raster as you can see here. Um, so the thing that I don't get is a signal. As you can see on my right, I've got Blade Runner playing on this Electronica, and this is coming from my MacBook through a bunch of adapters and um, various trickery. And it's not a great image, but it's there. We can see, you know, we can see Blade Runner. I can't get Blade Runner on this. So today's project is to disassemble this a little bit, kind of take a look around inside and see what the story is, and see if we can get Blade Runner showing on this screen. And I think it's possible, because we've got raster. So that's the mission today. Let's dive in. OK, let's do, a quick, uh, let's do a quick walk around on this thing. So I can see that it's, like all Soviet televisions, it's been opened at some point. I can also see that this, I guess this is the brightness knob. Something is not right there. All right, we've got the antenna for UHF and the other option. Here's the volume knob that wasn't quite working. Uh, got a couple of fuses down here. The proprietary Soviet television plug. Usual warnings about uh, don't touch it with the case off. This cost 245 rubles when it came out, which if I'm not mistaken was a, quite a bit of money. Let's see if we got a date here. Nine kilograms. Not seeing a date on this, but hopefully that'll be on the caps inside. Plastic's in pretty great shape. Uh, maybe a good candidate for a little bit of plastic restoration. So this is kind of cool. This is a feature on some older, on some of the larger Soviet televisions. This channel selector comes out and you've got the, the fine tuning, I guess, inside here. Now this particular mechanism should be spring loaded and it's a little, well, it's not, working exactly the way it should, but it still appears to be working okay. So uh, some of you know I'm a little bit superstitious and uh, I think that a clean television is a healthier television for some reason, which I understand that scientifically that makes zero sense whatsoever, but we're gonna give us a quick wipe down before we get started, just to kind of let the machine know that we are on its side. We are not here to pilfer it for parts. We are not here to break it, repurpose it, steal it, whatever three cents worth of gold that are in some of the transistors that's a real thing right now unfortunately a lot of people are destroying these old soviet electronics for like a dollar's worth of gold in some of the parts and it's really unfortunate but um we're doing the opposite we're going to try to save these things Okay, here we go. So we're inside. What do we got here for dates? Okay, there we go. 01-1980. So January of 1980. That's uh, about where we put it. So this is a 1980-81 television. Solid state, of course. Everything looks pretty clean. Not seeing any major areas of catastrophic failure. You can see down in here, that's our main transformer. There's our two main filter caps. Um, I'm gonna say the horizontal output transistor is probably on that massive heat sink down there. There's a secondary transformer, not sure what that's doing, but it's got its own pair of filter caps. That's interesting, okay. Didn't expect to see two large transformers in this. All right, guys, first thing I'd like to do is discharge the CRT. So I'm gonna take my very expensive CRT discharge tool, ground it to the chassis, which we'll do right here, and slip it under the hood. 
Oh, the hood just fell out. Put no pressure on that at all, and it just came out. So just pop that guy right back in where it came from. This is where we're gonna be focusing a lot of our attention today because we don't have any video signal coming, coming in here. So we're gonna test these connections and see if everything is all right there. So I've got this antenna cable. This is the one we're using to actually get Blade Runner signal into the television. And what I wanna do is hook this up and see if we've got contact um, going all the way through the native cable on the back. So we're gonna take the meter into continuity mode. I wanna talk for a minute about how we're bringing the video signal from my MacBook into this television. First, we're using a mini display port to VGA adapter. Then the signal goes to a VGA to RCA converter, then an RCA to RF cable adapter. And from there, we go into the antenna port of the television. This kind of antenna connector was standard in Europe in the days of analog television. It's sometimes known as a PAL coaxial antenna connector or a belling Lee connector, or sometimes it's just called an F connector. And we have signal, okay. What that tells us is that these uh, ports, even though they look pretty beat up, are functioning as they should. So it's going through some of these caps. I'm obviously not gonna pull off all of these caps and take a look and check all of them. That's just way too many. But I did notice that this guy is super loose. On the back, I didn't see anything, but I think we might try to address him because something doesn't seem right. But look what we got here. We've got some sort of catastrophic failure on this capacitor. Look at all that burn. It blew out the back of the capacitor. I mean, this thing is dead. And look at all this charring that happened under it. That is a catastrophic failure. Let's see what this is. 0 0.022 microfarads, 630 volts. Oh, but look at the date code here, 1986. So, wow, 1986. So this television is a little bit later than I thought. Look, it's got a hole, this, in the cap, capacitor's got a hole in the side. I mean, that must have been, that had to have made a lot of smoke when that happened. Look, and it, it charred the top of the, Transformer, it's lucky it didn't catch that paper on fire. Um, maybe that's why they retired this thing. I don't know what this board does. It's attached to the brightness and on off switch. What else is, where's that going? This is attached to the, what? So this is just the headphone cable. But I mean, that, how, do you, how does that even happen? Over voltage events? I'm going to guess. Look at the charring on this other one, too. All of these need to be investigated. Okay, let me see if I can, if I have a 630 volt capacitor. That's kind of serious capacitor. Okay, I did some research on this, and I think this is actually, happens to be exactly what we need. So the 2J code on the top here is 630 volts. And the 223K, that's 22 with three zeros after it, picofarad. So 22,000 picofarad, which is exactly 0 0.022 microfarad. So if I'm not mistaken, we can swap this blown guy with this with no problem. So that's good news. So we're going to get to work on that. Okay, that's all buttoned up. New capacitor. Had to put the old ones in also, but whatever. Hit this again with some deoxids. So what's next? Um, my hope is that, let's continue our visual inspection. It's really nice to find a burn spot like that. That's not a bad thing, that's a good thing because the burn spot tells us exactly where a problem is. So I would like to find more burn spots like that. As we saw earlier, we've got a, where is it? Here's this loose capacitor, we might change that in a bit. So it's kind of hard to see, but down here next to the flyback transformer, next to this, I think this is a voltage tripler. I don't actually know what that is. I'm pretty sure it's a tripler. So we've got a bunch of capacitors down in there, and those are capacitors that are involved in the high voltage circuit. Oh, but the thing is that we have good raster, so I don't even know if I want to mess, mess with those right now. Yeah, we're going to leave those exactly how they are. OK, 
Okay, look at that. This uh, the leg of this capacitor just completely separated. I don't think it was connected at all. So it's a good thing we checked on that. So one thing that I have, <clears throat> it's taken me a long time to learn and that I'm trying to get in the habit of is always testing these capacitors before I put them in. Because I can't afford Nichicon capacitors, really great capacitors for all of these projects. A lot of these projects I'm just throwing like massive amounts of capacitors at old components, at old uh, devices hoping it'll work. But, um, so it's not feasible for me to order really nice stuff. So I buy kind of cheap bulk capacitors, but I need to test them. And there've been a few times that they surprise me. Flip that over in capacitance mode. See what this guy gives us. 46 microfarad, I'll take it. All right, new capacitor is in. Any other loose ones around here? Let's hit all these pots with deoxid. This plastic mounting point has broken off from, it's not the chassis, it's just the case, I guess. And that has put some torque on some of these other components. I happen to have some JB Weld plastic bonder that I can mix together and sort of put in there. This is just gonna bond in right there, if you can see that. Okay, for it to come on. There's our raster. Whoa! Whoa, guys! Here it is! Oh. We had it. There it is. Do you mind if I smoke? It won't affect the test. Okay, okay, I'm gonna button this up. Let me button this up and we'll do a final screening here. We did it! Okay guys, we've got, well. Okay, it's not super stable. You can see it's a little, Blade Runner on a Soviet Unis television, 1982-ish, or I think we found a component from 83 maybe, so early 80s CRT television. We fixed the signal input, did some basic maintenance, changed some capacitors that were clearly problematic. So the television is actually in pretty good condition now. It's been a lot of fun, this was a good one. So uh, thanks for coming along and we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>